Greetings, greetings, greetings. Hey, how y'all doing? This is a Sunday edition of Root Work coming to you on Black Power Media. Coming to you on a Sunday. I was, I don't remember, did I schedule this show for Friday? May have. And then I scheduled it for Saturday and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy my Saturday. I'm going to schedule this show on a Sunday, a lazy Sunday afternoon for all of you heathens and pagans who ain't had no church to go to or didn't go to no church. I wanted to change up just a wee of a tad bit. I'm still going to do uh, analysis and interviews when and where I can. But today I hadn't uh, seen you guys in a while and I was looking around for a show idea. I'm not going to use that word content. I've decided I am not a content creator. Uh, but I was looking around for a show idea and I said, well, let me, maybe I can recycle something. So April is National Poetry Month. And four years ago, mm, that seems like a lifetime, four years ago during the lockdown of 2020, some friends of mine, acquaintances, colleagues of mine, peeps of mine, in order to break through the monotony, would read on Facebook. They would read whole chapters of books. I started to, but stopped because you know how that can go. But uh, one thing I did do was a couple of nights, there were times when I read some poetry. Now, I am not a poet, and I know it. I am not a spoken word artist. I am a writer. I am a journalist. But I know what I like. When I hear something that stirs me or that moves me, you know, I know what I like. And so that's what I shared uh, about four years ago. And so I was able to dig out those, um, those Facebook lives. And I thought I would share them here on Root Work on Black Power Media. So you know how I go with me and this tier technology. I ain't even, okay, yeah, I do have it at the bottom. Cash App, Venmo, Root Worker, for those who are so inclined, want to make sure that that's at the bottom. Uh, but uh, overall, Black Power Media, if you have not subscribed, if you have not liked, if you have not watched, if you have not shared the videos before on my personal Root Work channel and here on Black Power Media, please do so. Please like, please subscribe, please share on your various social media platforms. We greatly appreciate that. Please become a, sustain a sustainer. So many folks, uh, we appreciate all 30, however many thousand of y'all, and it continues to climb, who subscribe to Black Power Media. We greatly, greatly appreciate y'all. Peace, Breeze. How are you, M. Breeze? So let me stop talking so much because I only wanted to be here an hour today. And uh, Ear Doctor going to come in for y'all later on with, with his vibes. But so again, giving you the context, these are some videos from about four years ago, some Facebook lives that I did regarding uh, poetry reading during the lockdown, just sharing. It's not my poetry. I'm reading other people's poetry. And let me tell you briefly, I think what I'll do is I'll go into these individuals later. But right now we've got pieces that I have read from Gil Scott Heron, Carolyn Rogers, Lucille Clifton, Etheridge Knight. Pat Parker, Warson Shire, Noor Abdul Kayam, who some people know as Albert Washington, formerly of the uh, New York Three 
member of the Black Panther Party, Black Liberation Army, Black Liberation Army, Asata Shakur. And it might be another one or two people in here. Um, I've forgotten. I don't know. But let's get this together right now. Uh oh. And as per usual, it wouldn't be a root work. <laughs> it wouldn't be a root work if there wasn't some malfunction. Whew, that's sad. But hey, what can I say? Sad but true. Unfortunately, true. Now let's see if I can. No. Very interesting. Very interesting. Because, you know, I did practice this before. Hold on one second. Let me see. Tonight, I'm not sure. Hold on. I did. I promise you I did. Hold on. I promise I did. And for some reason, it's not here. There they go. Okay. So, Gil Scott Heron, Lucille Clifton, Carolyn Rogers, Etheridge Knight, Pat Parker, Warson Shire, Noor Abdul Kayam, formerly Albert Washington, Asada Shakur, and I may have left someone out. Uh, these pieces are not in any particular order. Again, this is coming from Facebook from a few years ago. Let's get into it and talk about it in a few. are coming from resistance fighters. Albert Neal Washington was a member of the Black Panther Party and a member of the Black Liberation Army, along with Herman Bell and Anthony Washington, who is now known as Jalil Muntakeen. They made up what is known as the New York Three, three members of the Black Liberation Army who were imprisoned, allegedly, for the murder of police officers in New York. This is a one, two, three, four. Very, very, it looked like it uh, cut out for a moment. Very, very short poem, only four lines by Albert Noah Washington. And it's called By Way of Introduction. To the oppressed, I am the angel of deliverance. Mm -hmm. To the oppressor, I am the angel of destruction. Mm -hmm. So who I am depends on who you are. Hmm. That's by way of introduction by Albert Noor Washington. Again, Albert Noor Washington was one of those members of the Black Liberation Army. And as we know, the Black Liberation Army members, such as Asada Shakur, Geronimo Jijaga, Daruba Ben Wahad, all of these people have been labeled as domestic terrorists. But are they really terrorists? That depends on who you are. And that's what Albert Noor Washington was talking about. Speaking of Asada Shakur, when it comes to uh, resistance, Asada, hey Jose, Asada Shakur is what we call a bright, shining example of resistance to the oppression carried on in the United States. Not only did she fight against it as a Panther, as a member of the Black Liberation Army, she escaped from prison with the help of her comrades in 1979 and she has remained free in revolutionary Cuba over 40 years now. I believe uh, last year was the 40th anniversary, 2019. Almost 50 years that she has been free hmm. in Cuba. Hmm. And we count that as most definitely one of our greatest uh, examples for resistance and resilience. This is a poem written by Asada Shakur that's contained in her autobiography, uh, Asada. And it's called The Tradition. <clears throat> carry it on now, carry it on. Carry it on now, carry it on. Carry on the tradition. There were black people since the childhood of time who carried it on. In Ghana and Mali and Timbuktu, we carried it on. Carried on the tradition. We hid in the bush when the slave masters came holding spear. And when the moment was ripe, leaped out and lanced the lifeblood of our would-be masters. We carried it on. Mm. On slave ships, hurling ourselves into oceans, 
slitting the throats of our captors. We took their whips and their ships. Blood flowed in the Atlantic, and it wasn't all ours. We carried it on. Fed Missy arsenic apple pies. Stole axes from the shed, went and chopped off Mass's head. We ran, we fought, we organized a railroad, an underground. We carried it on. In newspapers, in meetings, in arguments and street fights, we carried it on. In tales told to children, in chants and cantatas, in poems and blues songs, in saxophone screams, we carried it on on soapboxes and picket lines, welfare lines, unemployment lines, our lives on the line, we carried it on. In sit-ins and pray-ins and march-ins and die-ins, we carried it on. On cold Missouri midnights, pitting shotguns against lynch mobs, on burning Brooklyn streets, pitting rocks against rifles, we carried it on against water hoses and bulldogs, against nightsticks and bullets, against tanks and tear gas, needles and nooses, bombs and birth control, we carried it on. In Selma and San Juan, Mozambique and Mississippi, in Brazil and in Boston, we carried it on. Through the lies and the sellouts, the mistakes and the madness, through pain and hunger and frustration, we carried it on, carried on the tradition, carried a strong tradition, carried a proud tradition, carried a black tradition, carry it on, pass it down to the children, pass it down, carry it on, carry it on now, carry it on to freedom. That poem is called The Tradition by Asata Shakur, and that's found in her autobiography, Asata. Now, I know this is Facebook Live. I'm keeping my word to do the poetry and pro in praise of poetry and prose for National Poetry Month. I've got one more poem, at least one more I want to do right now, but I really need a drink of water. So I'm going to get a drink of water while y'all look at the ceiling real quick, and I'll be right back. Yeah, I didn't really go over these videos. I just identified which ones were which. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah, so until I can figure out the technology better. Four years later. Apologize, I had to do it like that. Stop laughing, Jose. Okay. And now for this, what do you call it? A set? This set? I got two more poems I want to do. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do them as part of this set or separately. Let's just see how the spirit flows. This is going to be recorded. I'm going to put it on YouTube so you'll be able to go back and see it. You ain't got to tune in right now. You ain't missing nothing. You can come back later tonight. I didn't want it to be too long, but since I'm going to put it up and you can access it at any time, I might as well do all five poems now. So this poem that I'm about to do, the last poem I did was Asada Shakur's poem. This is a poem for Asada Shakur. It's written by a brother in Atlanta, Georgia, by the name of Makungu Akinyela. And the title of this poem is Whirlwind. Mm. You don't know where to find me, to lock me up and bind me. You look where you thought I might have been. I live in the eyes of the people, the hearts and minds of the people. You look for me in the alleys, and I ride the wind. Hmm. No matter how you treat me, lock me up and beat me, I'm determined to one day break free. I live in the eyes of the people, the hearts and minds of the people. You look for me in the streets, and I'm in the breeze. I'm a panther a phantom, a soldier in worker's dress. I'll rise up in the east and, and then strike you from the west. I'm a cobra, a tiger, an urban freedom fighter. I'm certainly not where you thought I might have been. I live in the eyes of the people, the hearts and minds of the people. I'm certainly not where you thought I might have been. 
I know you're going to look for me. So if you look for me, look for me in the whirlwind. That's for Asata Shakur by Makungu Akinyela, and it's entitled Whirlwind. Very interesting that he chose these words for this sister. It's believed that she is, a, it's believed she is a daughter of Oya. And I think that was a most fitting poem for her. Now this next poem, I'm just gonna go ahead on and do it. And uh, we gon' we gonna do the thing as we say. I'm gonna go ahead on and I'm gonna read this poem. And I don't know if this poem speaks to resilience or not, but uh, I'll give you the background on it. I was talking with one of my mentors. Her name is uh, Phyllis Jackson. She was a member of the Central Committee of the Black Panther Party. This was about, at minimum, 10 years ago. Phyllis would come to the trial every day of uh, the man who murdered Oscar Grant. And I'm not sure how we had gotten on this subject, but we were talking about Black people pleading insanity, or how come more Black people don't plead insanity. I'm not sure how we got on. I'm not sure. But... Along those lines, she asked me if I if I had ever heard of this poem called One Thanksgiving Day by Pat Parker. Now, I had heard Pat Parker's name before, but I had never heard this poem. And when I read it, I was like, oh, okay. It's like that. So I'm going to read this poem as part of this. And, of course, you can either take it or leave it. But if you take it, you let me know where you think it fits in, in terms of resilience and resistance. This is One Thanksgiving Day by Pat Parker. One Thanksgiving Day, Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno and ran over 30 people. Six of them died. One Thanksgiving Day, Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno, and ran over 30 people. Six of them died. Priscilla, Priscilla, who did you see? What face from your past? Was it the waitress who waited to wait on you? Was it the clerk who tried to sell you only the brightest colored clothes? Was it your child's teacher who tried to teach her that she was slow? Was it the security guard at the bank who guarded you from the bank's money with his eyes? One Thanksgiving day, Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno and ran over 30 people. Six of them died. Screams filled the street. Panic ran through the crowd like a losing streak at the blackjack tables and the state of Nevada was stunned. A tired, middle-aged black woman was not thankful that day. Not thankful for her job wrapping gifts at Macy's. Not thankful for the state taking custody of her child. Hmm. She was not thankful for her Lincoln Continental. Hmm. Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental and hurled through the streets of Reno. The killer made in Motown factories swept down on tourists looking to make a big hit hit by a navy blue steel bludgeon, screams dying beneath its wheels, and the state of Nevada was angry. She went to trial. Insanity, her lawyers pled. She was crazy with anger. She was crazy with fear. She was crazy with defeat. She was crazy with isolation. No sane person kills strangers with their cars. Priscilla Ford said, yes, I drove my car into the whiteness of Nevada streets. She would say nothing more, and the state of Nevada was frightened. If Priscilla Ford could do it, who else? How many black faces that emptied garbage, weighted tables, bagged groceries, wrapped presents were capable? 
reaction was swift. One entrepreneur printed a card. It said, Happy Thanksgiving, with a picture of Priscilla on its front. Inside it said, Sorry I missed you. Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno, and ran over 30 people. Six of them died, and the state of Nevada was vindictive. You cannot be insane. To be enraged is not insane. To be filled with hatred is not insane. To lash out at whiteness is not insane. It is being a nigger. It is being your place in life. Hmm. Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno, and ran over 30 people. Six of them died. And now Priscilla Ford will die. The state of Nevada has judged that it is not crazy for black folks to kill white folks with their cars. Priscilla Ford will be the second woman executed in Nevada's history. It's her highest finish in life. That's One Thanksgiving Day by Pat Parker. Now, when Priscilla Ford did this, this was back in the early 70s. It may have been 1974. And to my knowledge, <clears throat> uh, I don't think Priscilla Ford was executed. She died in prison. But she was most definitely locked up. And uh, she was sentenced to death. But uh, I think they before they executed her, she passed away. So that's One Thanksgiving Day by Pat Parker. And again, you let me know uh, where you think that fits in terms of resilience and resistance. I stated last week that I was doing poems that kind of got to me, that kind of spoke to me. And that was one of them. This next poem, this last poem that I'm going to do, this one spoke to me also. Now, this is by a poem by a brother by the name of Etheridge Knight. I believe he wrote this in the late 60s or early 70s. I'm not sure. But you can find this book in his 1986 book, The Essential Etheridge Knight. Mm. And this is called On the Idea. I think I'm going to need story hour with Tom Caesar. This one is, this right now is uh, in praise of prose and poetry. So this is called On the Idea of Ancestry by Etheridge Knight. I think my, y'all excuse me, I'm low budget technology. Feel my voice getting raspy again. Need to take a swig real quick. And that is water. If you, in case you were wondering, uh, if I show that, that's water. It ain't gin. <clears throat> It ain't Seagram's. Nope. On the Idea of Ancestry by Etheridge Knight. Taped to the wall of my cell are 47 pictures, 47 black faces. My father, mother, grandmothers, one dead, grandfathers, both dead, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, cousins, first and second, nieces and nephews. They stare across the space at me, sprawling on my bunk. I know their dark eyes, they know mine. I know their style, they know mine. I am all of them, they are all of me. They are farmers, I am a thief. I am me, they are thee. I have at one time or another been in love with my, grand with my mother, one grandmother, two sisters, two aunts, one went to the asylum, and five cousins. Mm. I am now in love with a seven-year-old niece. She sends me letters in large block print, and her picture is the only one that smiles at me. I have the same name as one grandfather, three cousins, three nephews, and one uncle. The uncle disappeared when he was 15. Just took off and caught a freight, they say. He's discussed each year. Facebook tripping. He's discussed each year when the family has a reunion. He causes uneasiness in the clan. He is an empty space. My father's mother, who is 93 and who keeps the family Bible with everybody's birth dates and death dates in it, always mentions him. There is no place in her Bible for whereabouts unknown. Each fall, 
The graves of my grandfathers call me. The brown hills and red gullies of Mississippi send out their electric messages, galvanizing my genes. Last year, like a salmon quitting the cold ocean, leaping and bucking up his birth stream, I hitchhiked my way from L.A. with 16 caps in my pocket and a monkey on my back. And I almost kicked it with the kinfolks. I walked barefooted in my grandmother's backyard. I smelled the old land in the woods. I sipped corn whiskey from fruit jars with the men. I flirted with the women. I had a ball till the caps ran out and my habit came down. That night I looked at my grandmother and split. My guts were screaming for junk, but I was almost contented. I had almost caught up with me. The next day in Memphis, I cracked a croaker's crib for a fix. This year there was a gray stone wall damming my stream. And when the falling leaves stir my jeans, I pace my cell or flop on my bunk and stare at 47 black faces across the space. I am all of them. They are all of me. I am me. They are thee. And I have no children to float in the space between. That is on the idea of ancestry by Etheridge Knight from the 1986 edition of his book, The Essential Etheridge Knight. So I'm not sure how many minutes I've been on. I'm going to see about putting this over on Instagram. Okay, we can we can end that part. We don't have to uh, listen to the to the rest of that. That's just me rambling. So like I was saying, that's um, me reading some poetry that spoke to me about four years ago during the lockdown, sharing when everybody was trying not to lose their minds and no place to go. So we all took to the internet. So that was from Facebook Live. I am not a poet. I'm not a spoken word artist, but I know what I like. And so I picked some poems for National Poetry Month and read them. And I thought that I would, I hope this isn't a dirty word, recycle that and bring that over here to Black Power Medium. So no, it's not fresh content. It's not recent, but it is relevant. I got one more set for you. This is, let's see. So we had, who did we have? In that first set, we had, who do we have? We had Albert Newell Washington, member of the Black Liberation Army, Black Panther Party. We had Asada Shakur, member of the Black Panther Party, uh, Black Liberation Army. We did a poem by Makungu Akinyela for Asada Shakur. Makungu Akinyela is an activist in Atlanta, Georgia, human rights uh, activist, revolutionary nationalist in Atlanta, Georgia. We did Pat Parker's One Thanksgiving Day. I chuckle whenever uh, I read that poem. And if this happened in the early 1970s, you know what kind of Lincoln Continental she was driving. That, 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 that was rough. And we just ended with Etheridge Knight on the idea of ancestry. So April 1st. Not only is April National Poetry Month, April 1st is the anniversary of the birth date of Gil Scott Heron. I believe it was uh, Brother Kalanji who did a, a piece on Gil Scott at the beginning of the month. April 2nd is the death date of Carolyn Rogers. A lot of people don't know Carolyn Rogers' name, but she was one of those Black arts movement poets right up there with Sonia Sanchez, uh, Nikki Giovanni, and of course, Haki Matabuti. She actually was a co-founder of Third World Press with Haki Matabuti and a sister by the name of Johari Amini. So we're going to do a poem. I'm going to do a poem by Carolyn Rogers, Lucille Clifton, Gil Scott Heron, of course, and Warson Shire. And it might be one or two in here that I forgot. So again, this is, I think I was calling it Poems of Resilience and Resistance. It's been four years. I don't remember. But hey, you know, again, sharing it over here on the Black Power Media platform. So let's get into this. But I wanted to do these real quick. 
So April 1st is the birth date of Gil Scott Heron, one of the greatest spoken word artists of our time. And April 2nd is the I just said that. death date of Carolyn Rogers. A lot of people aren't familiar with Carolyn Rogers, but she was one of the sister architects of the Black Arts Movement. And she's a co-founder of Third World Press in Chicago with Haki Marabuti and Johari Amini. So in honor of National Poetry Month, uh, in praise of poetry and prose, something to do, uh, I'm going to start with a poem by Carolyn Rogers, and I'm going to do a poem by Gil Scott Heron. That's for you, Janae. And uh, I also have a poem that spoke to me by Warson Shire. Now, the Warson Shire poem you know, in this time that we're living in, COVID, the, the time of COVID-19, coronavirus, it's important that we keep our spirits up. It's important that we uh, maintain our mental health. Uh, it's important that we remember that we are resilient people. The Warson Shire, one of the things that I like about her is that she talks about ugliness in such a beautiful way. You almost forget she's talking about something so ugly. So I came across her poem, home the other day and i was like damn it just hit me and so because it's talking about something so ugly in such a beautiful way because it's talking about uh resilience and what people have to do uh those are the kind of things that i want to focus on while we are while we in this, this here lockdown so let me stop running my mouth and let me run somebody else's mouth so this first poem i'm going to do is by Carolyn Rogers. Now, I don't have her book of poetry. I was trying to find this poem on the internet. It might be longer than this. It's like two paragraphs. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna read what I have because this is a poem that spoke to me, Carolyn Rogers. And it's, this poem is called, The Last Motherfucker. <laughs> they say that I should not use the word motherfucker anymore <laughs> in my poetry or in any speech I give. Mm. They say that I must and can only say it to myself. As the new black womanhood suggests, a softer self, a more reserved speaking self. They say that respect is hard won by a woman who throws a word like motherfucker around. Wow. And so they say, because we love you, throw that word away, black woman. I say that I only call motherfuckers motherfucker. So no one should be insulted. And so I say, this is the last poem I will write, calling all manner of whites card carrying motherfuckers and all manner of blacks, Negroes too, sweet motherfuckers, crazy motherfuckers, low down motherfuckers, cool motherfuckers, mad and revolutionary motherfuckers. But anyhow, you all know, just like I do, whether I say it or not, there's plenty of mean motherfuckers out here trying to do the struggle in. And that's Carolyn Rogers, the last motherfucker. Carolyn Rogers, who passed away April 2nd, 2010, one of the architects of the Black Arts Movement and uh, co-founder of Third World Press with Haki Madabuchi. So in honor of April 1st, first day of, hey Dawn, first day of uh, National Poetry Month, Want to give a shout out to that sister <clears throat> and read her poetry. Now, this one is for you, Janae, for uh, reminding me about this. Gil Scott Heron, I didn't realize it until uh, today, late last night. Gil Scott Heron's birthday is April 1st. So we got to give that brother a shout out. So I'm going to do, <laughs> by request, Whitey on, on the moon. moon. A rat done bit my sister Nell and Whitey's on the moon and her face and arms began to swell, and Whitey's on the moon. I can't pay no doctor bill, but Whitey's on the moon. 10 years from now, I'll be paying still while Whitey's on the moon. You know the band just up my rent last night? Cause Whitey's on the moon. No hot water, no toilet, no lights, but Whitey's on the moon. I wonder why he's up in me. Cause Whitey's on the moon. I was already giving him 50 a week and now Whitey's on the moon. Taxes taking my whole damn check. The junkies make me a nervous wreck. The price of food is going up. 
And as if all that shit wasn't enough, a rat done bit my sister Nell, and Whitey's on the moon. And her face and arms began to swell, but Whitey's on the moon. Was all that money I made last year for Whitey on the moon? How come I ain't got no money down here? Hmm. Whitey's on the moon. You know, I just about had my fill of Whitey on the moon. I think I'll send these doctor bills, airmail special, to Whitey on the moon. <clears throat> That's Gil Scott here, April 1st. Was he? I think he was born in 1949. But if he wasn't born in 1949, he was born April 1st. I know that much. So, did those two poems real quick. Carolyn Rogers, The Last Motherfucker. Gil Scott Heron, Whitey on the Moon. <clears throat> I've got two poems by, two brief poems by um, Lucille Clifton that I want to share. And I think I'm going to end it with Warsenshire. Where's my Lucille Clifton poem at? And then I'm going to let y'all go on about your business. Lucille Clifton is one of those sisters who doesn't get enough play. And uh, she doesn't get enough play by me either. My, um, my fiction reading is very, very poor. I've always concentrated on history, politics, etc. So trying to get back into reading fiction. My poetry was okay, but uh, then I stopped. So I'm familiar with a lot of what we call the pioneers, the elders, the old school. Uh, so Warson Shire is someone who came to me new. And then going back over again, uh, going back and revisiting, that's when I found Lucille Clifton. So again, I'm doing this real, real, these uh, short poems because they spoke to me and or they speak to the resiliency that black people are going to need in this time period. Hey, Mike. Seema said, you're going in like a mixtape. Yeah, okay, I hope so. So I want to do two poems real quick by Lucille Clifton. This one is called, Why Some People Be Mad at Me Sometimes. Mm. They ask me to remember, but they want me to remember their memories. And I keep on remembering mine. Mm. That's it. That's the poem. That's all she said. And that's all she needed to say. Oh, sure. So when I tell you that that struck me. I, I started to get that as a tattoo, but I don't like pain. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to get no tattoo. The other poem by Lucille Clifton is called, Won't You Celebrate With Me? Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman. What did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay my one hand holding tight, my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Now, if that don't speak to the resiliency of black people, then I don't know what does. Hmm. Maybe I don't know what resiliency means. I don't know. But um, so again, I'm on here live, but it's going to be available later on on Facebook. And uh, I might just put this up on YouTube too. Tara Betts is uh, doing poetry. Not that I'm like Tara Betts. I'm not in the same league with her. She's a professor, you know, you know and all this, that, and the other. But she got hers up on, on YouTube. So I might do mine too. Mm -hmm. But right now, this is for my Facebook folks who uh, are stuck. Hey, Sam, who are stuck in the house with quarantine. And uh, in the words of my sister, Angela Jackson, this is one of the ways I decided to share with people and help break through the monotony. So this is a poem called Home by Warson Shire, the British Somali sister, who uh, people, a lot of people know her from uh, Beyonce's Lemonade. And this poem right here, like I said, it just hit me the other day because it talks of ugliness in such a beautiful way. <clears throat> so because it hit me, I'm sharing it. It's called Home. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. Hmm. You only run for the border 
when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbors running faster than you, breath bloody in their throats. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factory is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you. Fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. It's not something you ever thought of doing until the blade burnt threats into your neck. And even then, you carried the anthem under your breath, only tearing up your passport in an airport toilet, sobbing as each mouthful of paper made it clear you wouldn't be going back. You have to understand that no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land. Mm. No one burns their palms under trains, beneath carriages. No one spends days and nights in the stomach of a truck, feeding on newspaper, unless the miles traveled means something more than the journey. No one crawls under fences. No one wants to be beaten, pitied. No one chooses refugee camps or strip searches where your body is left aching or prison because prison is safer than a city of fire. And one prison guard in the night is better than a truckload of men who look like your father. No one could take it. No one could stomach it. No one's skin would be tough enough. The go home blacks, refugees, dirty immigrants, asylum seekers sucking our country dry, niggas with their hands out, they smell strange, savage, messed up their country, and now they want to mess ours up. How do the words, the dirty looks roll off your backs? Maybe because the blow is softer than a limb torn off. Or the words are more tender than 14 men between your legs. Or the insults are easier to swallow than rubble, than bone, than your child body in pieces. I want to go home, but home is the mouth of a shark. Home is the barrel of the gun, and no one would leave home unless home chased you to the shore. Unless home told you to quicken your legs, leave your clothes behind, crawl through the desert, wade through the oceans, drown, save, be hunger, beg, forget pride, your survival is more important. No one leaves home until home is a sweaty voice in your ear saying, leave, run away from me now. I don't know what I've become, but I know that anywhere is safer than here. Mm. That's home by Warson Shire. Now, you know, I had to look up the pronunciation of her name, right? I was like, how you say that? Anyway, so those are the poems that I wanted to do tonight to kick off National Poetry Month, the poems, Jocelyn Edmonds. Don't get it twisted like she got a poetic, tender heart. This one a gangster. I love you. I love you too, Jocelyn. Yeah, worse than shy. She ain't nothing to play with, all right? But uh, I was saying I wanted to uh, do some poetry for to break through the monotony, to make a contribution to you know, sharing with people during this time period. And uh, my sister, Tony Blackman, said, go on and read that poetry out loud. My sister, Angela Jackson, said, share your gifts with folks. I said, all right, I'll do that. So I also want to do some pre uh, prose that has touched me. Also, uh, I would like to read, not right now, not tonight, but at some point, I'd like to read some Octavia Butler, some Ayikwe Arma. You know, LeVar Burton is going to be reading. I'm not LeVar Burton, but, uh, and he has permission from the authors. I ain't trying to get in trouble, but I know people like certain authors. So I'm thinking about reading other authors. Um, uh, again, not necessarily tonight, but in the um, coming hours, days, hopefully not months, that we are locked down as part of Sharon. So this was my kickoff, April 1st. I did uh, Gil Scott Heron, Whitey on the Moon, because Janae has for that. 
April 1st is Gil Scott Heron's birthday and Carolyn Rogers for the anniversary. Tomorrow it will be 10 years that we lost her, April 2nd, 2010. <clears throat> one of the architects, one of the poets of the Black Arts Movement. She's not really, unless you're a serious student, you don't really hear about Carolyn Rogers. We hear about <clears throat> Sonia Sanchez and Nikki Giovanni, and we should, but Carolyn Rogers is also right up there. And she's also given credit as a founder, co-founder of Third World Press with Haki Matabuti. So I thank you all. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Ifa Shola. Hey, Brownwin, Irvin, Sophie. I'm thanking a bunch of people. I don't need to be thanking all them people. I don't need to do all that right now. Huh. So yeah, that was, in case you tuned in late, that was not recent, but it was relevant. I was digging around in the archives looking for uh, some show ideas to share because I'm not a content creator. I reject that label. And I said, okay, April is Poetry Month. Um, Kalanji just did a show on Gil Scott Heron. And Gil Scott Heron deserves his own show. He deserves all the flowers. All of these poets, all of these spoken word artists, all of these griots, all of these healers, these priests uh, and priestesses of the word deserve their own shows. So that's a show idea that someone should do. Sound like a lot of work. I don't know if it's going to be me. Point being, this was me reading poetry about four years ago during the uh, lockdown 2020. COVID, when, when we first got locked down here uh, for COVID here in the U.S. It's not recent, but it is relevant. Again, so I was looking around for something to share here on Root Work. I'm not turning Root Work into a spoken word show. I'm still going to do uh, interviews and analysis when and where I can as soon as possible. But I wanted to do this. Um, I wanted to share these words, these poets and these poems, just to change up the energy just a little bit, you know, we talk about black power so much. We talk about the black power movement. We call ourselves black power media. There was an artistic, a deliberate, intentional, artistic component to the black power movement, the late 60s and early 70s. An arm, a cultural arm known as the black arts movement. Of course, Amiri Baraka, Larry Neal. Askia, uh, Askia Ture, Sonia Sanchez, Nikki Giovanni, Carolyn Rogers, the poet, I believe her name is pronounced I, A-I. I finally saw a book cover of one of her books a couple of days ago over on Instagram. Social media, it can be good for some things. So if you're not familiar with uh, Etheridge Knight, if you're not familiar with any of the folks that I have uh, read, please look them up on your own. But then again, this is the BPM crew. Y'all are pretty, y'all are pretty on it. Pretty much up on stuff. Pretty you on it. So, but again, not enough, uh, in my opinion, attention is paid to that artistic movement. Not only then, but now we have artists right now today. Um, I don't have. I'm not sure what I have of his, but I know. For those who watch Black Power Movement, I believe Skip Coon, I want to say he's on Diallo's show a lot. Hopefully I'm not getting that wrong. But I knew of Skip Coon because he was hip-hop artist. That's where I first heard about him uh, a few years ago. So it's a lot of folks out here who are doing contemporary work, not just uh, like me regurgitating our classics our traditions from the 60s and 70s. That needs to be done too, but we need to also pay attention to the artists of right now today. So again, this was a little contribution that I made four years ago, and I was hoping to bring it over here to the Black Power Movement. So for those of y'all who are here, this is not going to be a long drawn out show, but for those of y'all who are here, hit me in the comments section. Should we do the poetry plagiarism hour with Tanda Cizue Shimmeringa? Story time with Tanda Cizue Shimmeringa? I never got around to reading uh, Octavia Butler over on Facebook Live. This was before, obviously, I came to, on, onto YouTube. 
I did read from Ayikwe Arma's 2000 Seasons. I didn't finish it. Yeah, it was a lot going on. Um, 2000 Seasons is a masterpiece of literature. If you have never read that, you need to read that. It's so much good literature out there. And if you saw from the beginning, I was talking about how my diet of fiction is very, very poor. I've always been a, a nonfiction person reading politics and history, political science. But I've been trying these last few years to get back into that. So much beauty, so much history, so much knowledge. So many of our traditions are contained in our fiction and in our poetry. Dang, you missed it. You ain't missed nothing, bruh. All you got to do is hit the play button after I end it. You, you all good. You, you'll be all right. So yeah, hit me up. Let me know if you if you want to. Well, then again, maybe I should just do it. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Everybody else just hit the play button and start rambling. Maybe I'll just ramble with a poem or a reading, in addition to the analysis and interviews of root work. But um. That's all I have to say today. I had not planned on this being long and drawn out. It's a Sunday. Y'all should be enjoying the rest of the Lord's day, chilling out, taking it easy, getting ready for tomorrow. But of course, don't forget that uh, the ear doctor is going to be on in a couple of hours to give you some more peace and rhythms to start your week off. But uh, that's all. Again, press the play button, hit that like button for me, sharing poems of resilience and resistance that I did four years ago, not my own poems. I'm not a spoken word artist. I am not a poet and I know it. I was simply reading and sharing to break through the monotony and the despair of when the lockdown first started on Facebook. There's a lot of monotony and despair right now with this genocide going on in Palestine. So we need that type of intervention. That's why I thought I would bring it over here to Black Power Media. All right, y'all. I'm about to get up out of here. Hopefully I will see you again this coming week. If not this week, it'll be next week. You take care of yourselves. You stay safe. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, tell somebody about Black Power Media, all right? Pretty please. And uh, I'm out, peace.